Oh, hi there. I almost didn't see you. I was too distracted by playing my awesome Harry Potter game on my awesome Pokemon Game Boy. Hey girls, it's Tuesday, and today I wanted to try something a little bit different. Okay, so today's video is a little bit unconventional in the sense that um, I'm going to read you a passage from my favorite book because I'm pretty much obsessed with it right now and I keep reading it over and over and over again and I just can't stop because it, it's it's amazing. So this video is a little bit abstract. It's a little bit different than something that I usually do, than the stuff that I usually do, um, but please bear with me um, and if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Um, so it's a passage from this book called The Raw Shark Texts which I'm reading in what little spare time I have. My life is so crazy busy right now, it's disgusting. Um, but girls, if you want to read me your favorite passages from your favorite books, I would love to hear them. Um, so, here goes. Imagine you're in a rowing boat on a lake. It's summer, early morning, a time when the sun hasn't quite broken free of the landscape and long projected shadows tiger stripe the light. The rays are warm on your skin as you drift through them, but in the shadows, the air is still cold, grayness holding onto undersides and edges wherever it can. A low, clinging breeze comes and goes, racing ripples across the water and gently rocking you and your boat as you float in yin-yang slices of morning. Birds are singing. It's sharp, clear sound, clean without the humming backing track of a day well underway. There's the occasional sound of wind and leaves and the occasional slap splash of a larger wave breaking on the side of your boat, but nothing else. You reach over the side and feel the shock of the water, the steady bob of the lake's movement playing up and down your knuckles in a rhythm of cold. You pull your arm back. You enjoy the afterache in your fingers. Holding out your hand, you close your eyes and feel the tiny physics of gravity and resistance as the liquid finds routes across your skin, builds itself into droplets of required weight, then falls, each drop ending with an audible tap. Now on that tap, stop. Stop imagining. Here's the real game. Here's what's obvious and wonderful and terrible all at the same time. The lake in my head, the lake I was imagining, has just become the leak in your head. It doesn't matter if you never know me or never know anything about me. I could be dead. I could have been dead a hundred years before you were even born and still. Think about this carefully. Think past the obvious sense of it to the huge and amazing miracle hiding inside. The lake in my head has become the leak in your head. Behind or inside or through the 218 words that made up by description, behind or inside or through those 969 letters, there is some kind of flow. A purely conceptual stream with no mass or weight or matter and no ties to gravity or time. A stream that can only be seen if you choose to look at it from the precise angle we are looking from now, but there, nevertheless, a stream flowing directly from my imaginary lake into yours. Next, try to visualize all the streams of human interaction, of communication, all those linking streams flowing in and between people through text, pictures, spoken words, and TV commentaries, streams through shared memories, casual relations, witnessed events, touching pasts and futures, cause and effect. Try to see this immense latticework of lakes and flowing streams. See the size and awesome complexity of it, this rich human environment. This waterway of paradise of all information and identities of societies and selves. Now go back to your lake. Back to your gently bobbing boat. But this time know the lake. Know the place for what it is and when you're ready, take a look over the boat's side. The water is clear and deep. Broken sunlight cuts blue wedges down, down into the clean, cold depths. Sit quietly, wait, and watch. Don't move. Be very, very still. They say life is tenacious. They say given half a chance or less, life will grow and exist and evolve anywhere, even in the most inhospitable and unlikely of places. Life will always find a way, they say. Be very quiet. Keep looking into the water. Keep looking and keep watching. <laughs> 